Hey guys, what's up? Thank you so much for tuning in today here at Elevate Church. We know that today's message is going to rock your world and elevate your life to the next level. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the message. Okay, so we're starting a new series, and uh, it's called You Get to Bake It. You like it? So today we're going we're gonna to learn how to bake. No, I, 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 was, I was looking for a title, and, uh, you know, I, I love cake. Who loves cake? Like, like I'd rather eat cake than eat food. <laughs> you know, because you can be very smart with your calories, right? It's however you use your calories. I'd rather eat it than drink it. So that's why I'd rather do tea and water. Um, but I love to, to eat cake. Um, I don't know how to bake. Uh, but I like the idea of baking. Uh, every year, no, not every year, but for many, many years, I will go and sh shop. You, you want to go shop like, uh, what is it, the William Sonoma, right? The, the beautiful place. It's for people that know how to cook and bake. And just, I remember just going in and dreaming and choosing. And, and you just, I, I would just get the, pre the pleasure of putting things in, in the basket. Like, okay, that this would be good, that the, you know, the, the baking pan and everything, the beautiful, everything. And then I will have to put it back because I know I'm not going to make it. And I'm not going to bake it. And then because I did it before, I did had gone not to William Sonoma. You go to like JCPenney or something like that, you know. But you buy it, but you'll never use it. So you can have all these things in your life, but unless you put them to work, unless you decide to open it, that's when we see change. That's when I can start seeing like, hey, I can literally not be waiting for someone to give me a cake or me go buy it, but I can actually bake it. And last week, uh, my husband was preaching on the, on the promises of God. And, uh, and I'm going to do my own quote because I think he said many times, uh, we are to be possessing the promises of God. And the promises, we need to possess them. We need to, oh, the promises to possess us, which is okay. But many times we're so fixated in the, in the problems that we possess the problems. And then it's hard to, to enter into a new territory. It's hard to enter in the promises in the, in, in the land of milk and honey if we are fully possessed, which we're fully invested in our problems. But as I were uh, learning, as as we're uh, learning to get our life together, our, our story together, our issues together. I believe that this message is going to bless you. It's going to help you to know how to literally get your ship together. One of the things that you need to know about God before I start preaching and I go into my message is that his desire for you and I is to be fruitful. And I want you to say it. He wants me to be fruitful. He wants you to take, he wants you to take, uh, this says we are, have been called to advance the kingdom of God. We have been called to advance. And I think many times we think, uh, you know, I'm not in ministry, so I don't need to advance the kingdom of God. No, the kingdom of God, when we say that we need to advance the kingdom of God, it means that you within yourself, the kingdom of God is within you. It's inside of you. And we need to continue to advance. Do you know that we were created to increase every single day? And because we have this mindset, many of us have the mindset of scarcity. We can. We, we have a poor mindset. Like, it's not enough. And, and as I was studying and, and preparing for this message, I thought, you know, we, we are expecting the promises of God. I'm expecting to increase. I'm expecting to grow. I'm expecting to develop and to be transformed. But every day, almost every day, right? This is me. Not about, I'm not talking about you. But... Almost every day I go, I go to sleep and I think, I didn't do enough. You know, I already finished my day with, I didn't do enough. And in the morning I wake up, I didn't sleep enough. Right? So all that, it's already, I already have set my mind on this mind of a poor mentality. I don't have enough. I didn't do enough. I didn't have a, a rest enough. But then I'm expecting to be fruitful i'm expecting to be productive but then already i already thought it i felt it and sometimes even if i don't feel it my face says it because my I have dark circles right and so what i want you to be aware of it tonight is that you and i have been given the ability the ability to possess every promise of god but in order to possess the promise of god it, it sounds beautiful 
But it's something that we need to work. It's something that we need to develop. In order to bear fruit, we must cultivate growth. And who likes to grow? I remember when I was little, and I don't know if this is a, a myth, but you know, it says growing pains, right? And I remember my knees growing for a long time, you know, like a long time. And someone says, you're growing. Well, they were lying to me because they're still the same. <laughs> but, but it's a saying, right? It hurts. It really hurts. And I think only the bravest, and that's what the Bible says, that only the violent take the kingdom by force. Because the enemy is fighting and he knows his end. He knows that he knows he's, he's done. But if he can get us on the portion of our lives here, on the little, little dash that you and I have, that Virginia was born in 1994, right? No, just kidding. But, you know, in that little dash, right? And then it's just a little dash compared to eternity. I'm taking my daughter's age. Did you notice that? <laughs> it's okay. You can lend it. Um, but he said, what, what, do, what are we going to do? What are we going to do with that little dash? What am I going to do with my life that God has given me? And then if we have Jesus, right? So if we have Jesus, the Bible says, this is the Bible. And, you know, I've read it. I mean, not read it. But I heard this since I think I became a Christian. The Bible, right? We even have given him an acronym for the Bible. What is it? Do you know it? Basic instructions, basic instructions before leaving earth, right? And we're like, basic instructions. We don't even read it, huh? <laughs> Is the instruction that no one's open. He's like my husband. He goes to Ikea. He never opens instructions. So, but he does now. He does now. I have to say he is now like the mature, as the younger he's getting, now he's getting wiser. <laughs> he hasn't, he doesn't have, he, he didn't leave any screws the last time, right? But, but it's true. It's true. We, we, it is true. It's a fact from last week. Yeah. <laughs> so he did, he did it though. He did it. He used everything he used everything he actually read none left the table standing okay yes however that's what we say about the bible that's what i always say like i even love it like i remember in the night is when i you know i got saved it's like oh mother the the bible is my basic instruction before leaving earth right and you know what you can read it and it's okay which the word is alive but if you don't practice it if you don't put it to if you don't chew it if you don't digest it there is no transformation we're just, we're just learning and quoting, and we're just learning, you know, what I'm going to call it, you know, Christian lingo or church lingo, right? Praise Jesus, right? <laughs> Raise the hallelujah, which is awesome, right? I'm raising a hallelujah, but inside I'm raising hell. It could be inside of me, right? You're like, raise a hallelujah, but inside you're like seething and doing all these things. Okay, you're not raising a hallelujah. You're just saying that you're raising a hallelujah. And I believe that God wants us to work inside. It always starts inside and out. It's always the work doesn't start outside. The work starts inside. And I'm going to tell on me because we're just doing our, our, our house being in renovation for the last eight months, uh, which was supposed to be eight weeks. It's been eight months. But it's good, though. It's good. And... Um, so everything is looking great, and then I was opening some drawers, and it's a mess inside my drawers. Like, I'm just, like, putting things there, like, so no one sees them, right? But outside, my table looks super neat, and everything is, like, I mean, it looks like if you see it, you're like, wow, you know what? She has it all together. Open the drawer. <laughs> I have receipts, tickets from three years ago, mints that don't work. Like, I mean, you name it, it's a mess. And that's what I thought about my life and sometimes our lives. You know, we can look at the, we, we can look the part. Yeah. I have looked the part before. You know, like, it's, this is not even my own Bible. Pastor Anthony lent me his Bible. <laughs> but I said, I need to look the part. They need to know that I read the Bible. I do read the Bible. But it's not at my house. If not, they take it from me here. So I've taken it from Pastor Anthony. Okay, so you have to know that you have been designed you and I have been designed for growth. So if we're stuck, if we're stuck, we can't move, it's because we have made a choice. Because God already made his choice. His, his choice is that we increase, is that we grow, that we be transformed. But you and I play a part in it, okay? So let us go to Lamentations 3, 22 and 23. I was telling you that you and I are 
designed to grow, right? And you know that God will never ask us to do anything that he has not given us the ability to do or to be. And I was reading because I like to remember I, I, this past Sunday I told you that I'm a researcher and I have a partner. His name is Google. <laughs> and so I was, I was uh, researching like, okay, so scientifically, like I want to know, like, because the word, actually science, I love Dr. Caroline Leaf. This is the science proves the word of God. It's proving the word of God. It's making the word stronger. But I believe that we can make it stronger if we used to use it, if we apply the word of God. But this is what it says. New studies in neuroscience says that the brain has plasticity. It means it's able to change. Our brain continues to grow, develop, and change. And it says daily. Do you know that daily you and I have been given neurons? But I have the choice every day, which is sucks. I wish God would get to choose for me, right? We get mad that because we want some things for God to choose for us, but some other things I want to choose, right? I want, I want God to choose for me like something that is nice. Like I want God to, to choose for me and say, okay, Virginia, I, I'm going to give you wisdom. And he has given you wisdom. But I want God to actually do the whole entire work for me. Like I want someone just to lay hands on my brain and I want them to say, Virginia, we release wisdom today. And you are the most amazing, anointed, appointed and woman of wisdom. When you open your eyes, you are a different woman. <sighs> you open your eyes, right? <laughs> and you're like, oh, voila. And you feel the same. And you're still stupid, right? <laughs> Why? Because we're not changing. Thank you for the wisdom, Lord. But then we're repeating the same cycles over and over, over and over. And then we blame God. Hey, I blame God before. But then I have to come to an understanding. You know what? No, it's not God. It's me because I'm choosing. I'm, I'm where I am where I am because I have chose to be in this place. But the beauty is that we get to choose what we're going to do today and what, we're gonna, what our future is going to look like. So Lamentations 3, 22 and 23 says, the, Lord, the Lord's love never ends. Do you know that he, his love for you and me never ends? I want you to close your eyes, and I want you to think about the most nastiest thing or thing that you have said or done. Think about it right now, and I'm sure you can think of it. And if you can't, you're denying. You're in denial. But I'm going to tell you that if you can't even think of the worst thing that you have done or you have said, I'm going to tell you that the love of God never ends, that at the moment he loves you the same. And I think that sometimes it's really hard to understand. It's hard to digest that what God loves me, even in my worst moment, according to the word of God, says the love, the Lord's love never ends. His mercies never stop. Have you ever thought that God left you and then he's not for you? He's not going to bless you anymore? Lie. Because he says right here that his mercies never stop. They are new every what? Every Sunday? Only when you come to church and you hear the preacher. They are new every Wednesday or when you hear a podcast. No, they are new every single day. And he says, your, lo his, your loyalty is great. Whose loyalty? Not our loyalty, his loyalty. Because he, if you're looking for a loyal friend, search no more. His name is Jesus. We're like, no, Jesus, I, 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 you know, you're good, but not that good, right? I want so-and-so to be loyal to me. He says, well, can you start with me? Can you taste me? Can you see how loyal I am to you? Can, you? can you just taste the love that I have for you? Can you believe it? Every single day we get to make a choice because salvation is for today. Salvation wasn't yesterday. Salvation is for today. And then I don't know about tomorrow, but today I can, I, I'm able to choose. So today we can believe, right? Let me give you another scripture. Philippians 2, 12, 13. And he says, therefore, my beloved, you can put your name like that. I did it today, this morning, in my time with the Lord. I said, therefore, my Virginia. I love it. He talks to me like that. As you have always obeyed, this is Paul, not as in my presence only, but not much more in my absence. How much more in my absence? Work out your own what? Salvation. With fear and trembling. For it is God who works in you both to will and to do for his good pleasure. And I love the Amplify because it says, so then, my dear ones, my dear Virginia, my dear Ari, my dear Anusha, just as you always 
obeyed my instructions with enthusiasm. Have you ever obeyed God's instruction with enthusiasm? Virginia, you need to forgive. Ah, how enthusiastic I am. Oh, he says that we need to we need to start walking in our new DNA. We need to start walking in our new in our new lineage. And it has to be like when he gives us a command that we have to be enthusiastic. Right? And he says, not only in my presence, but not much more in my absence. Continue to work out your own salvation that is what cultivated. Bring it to full effect. Actively pursue spiritual maturity. As I was reading this, I, th I thought about the parable where it says about the seed, right? The seed of the story. He says that some get to bear 30%, some 60, and some 100. So that means you and I have a choice. You and I get to play a part. How much am I going to bring that full word of God in my life into full effect? Or am I just going to take 30%? And if you know that with God, he's even okay with 30%. To me, it's like, wow, God, you, you are full of grace and mercy. Because if, if I was God, I would, be, I would demand 100%. Thank God I'm not your God, right? Thank God I'm not my own God. But he says, no, I'm okay. 30, 60, or 100. But he says, that is cultivated. So that means you have to cultivate it. He's not going to cultivate it for you. He's not going to bring it to full effect. He already gave it to you. Now you need to exercise, actively pursue spiritual maturity with awe, inspire fear and trembling. Using serious what? Caution. And critical self-evaluation to avoid anything that might offend God or discredit the name of Christ. Have you offended God? Have you discredited his name? Do you know that when we don't work out our own salvation... We offend him, and we're offended with people, right? No, we're actually not offending people. We're not, that's not even the issue. That's just a symptom. We're actually offending God. When you and I don't work out our own issues, when you and I do not own our own mistakes, do you know that we're not only offending God, but we, he says that we are what? Discredited in the name of Jesus. For it is not your strength but it is God who is effectively at work in you, both to will and to work, that is strengthening, energizing, and creating in you the longing and the ability to fulfill your purpose for his good pleasure. So when he asked us to work out our own salvation, he says, actually, I'm not asking you to do something that I'm not going to give you the strength, the ability, the ability. The, the ability, the will for the longing. Do you know that if you right now, you have no desire, you, you might be at a place and you say, you know what? At this point, I have no desire. I have no desire to work out my own salvation. Right now, at this time, I want a desire. I want to work out someone else's salvation. We're good at that, right? We're good at working out everybody else's salvation by our own. We are good at criticizing other people. We are good at seeing what they're doing. No, it's just that they seem different than you. But it says that it is for his good pleasure. I'm going to tell you that when we decide to abide in the word of God, when we decide to, to really like get the word of God, and, and believe me, I used to be this person that if I didn't read like 10 chapters, 20 chapters, I felt that God wasn't pleased with me. Hey, he does it, it to him. I believe that, yes, you should grow and grow in the word of God and, and reading more of the word of God. But to him, what matters is like if you read five chapters, which scripture are you living? Just one. Just give me one. Which scripture are you living this moment in life? Which one are you applying? Because we can quote it. We can say it. But one thing is to say and another one is to do it, right, and to live it. Okay, so please do not work out your neighbor's salvation, your boss's salvation, your spouse's salvation, your children's salvation, the world's salvation. You want to save the world, but you're losing yourself. You know that that's possible because it says in the, word, in the Bible, in the word of God, it says that you can, you can win the world and then you can lose your own self because you forgot about your own problems. It's not that you forgot about your own problems. You chose not to deal with your ship. So let's ship it, right? Okay. 
to work out your own salvation doesn't mean to perform. It just, it, it, he didn't say work out for your salvation. And I think many times that's what we want to look the part, right? right? That's what we want to we speak like, we want to sound like the word of God, we want to look like the word of God. You, even in your car, you have every sticker, a fish sticker that you can find. <laughs> your house is full of crosses, right? People come to visit, you have like 20 Bibles, that concordance is open, <laughs> right? You go to work and you have all the scriptures around your cubicle. You, you do praise and worship all day. You're humming, sing hallelujah. That's the only thing but then I know about because I love the song, so I'm not. I really love the song. I sing it all the time. And then I get convicted, Right? But God is not interested in our doing. He's interested in our being. Because if we really fix our eyes on our being, then our doing is going to get in alignment. But if we do it backwards, we're like, no, we're, we're going to just, I'm going to just do. I'm just going to be kind. And inside, you're not really kind. I'm just going to speak life. But in your thoughts, you're not even thinking thoughts of good things about you or about other people. But we sound good. But I believe that we are where we are. Is the world is lost and it's in need of hope. And you know what? We haven't, we haven't really won many people to Jesus. And it's not because Jesus is not ready. It's because we are not ready. It's because I am not ready. Because are you ready to receive the way that just as people, just as people come in and just the way they are, and we're not trying to change it, they're, they're just come in and let the and let the conviction of the Holy Spirit, let the Word of God bring, tra bring, bring transformation to their lives. But let us, you and I, be an example of Jesus. I believe that we'll be winning so many peoples. As did I say peoples? People. People. So if you want, I give you permission, go remove your fishies from your sticker of the fish you can close a few a few bibles that you have them on, that, on psalms 91 right we always have protection <laughs> how do i know because i open it on psalms 91 and when i feel protected i go to, to psalms 27 oh 23 right to remind myself that he's my shepherd but i'm not nobody's leading me we can say the lord is my shepherd i shall not want but we're not allowing the shepherd to lead us. And yet we live in lack. Right? This is a good message. A good message that is convicting my life. Because conviction is going to bring us to repentance. Right? Salvation is for today. It's just for today. Salvation is not for tomorrow because you don't know about tomorrow. But today, you're alive, you're breathing. If, you're, if you are bright, I mean alive and you're breathing, you go like this. Okay, you still get, you have a chance. Do you know that we have a chance to change the course of our lives today? And I was like, Lord, why don't you change it for me? I want to really sing the song, Jesus, take the wheel. I don't want to drive no more. I don't want to do like those turns that are like so like edgy, so abrupt. I know, I, Lord, you take the wheel. Can, you know, I can't. We, it's not like today, everything that we live in a society now that everything is so easy. I was hungry last night. You know what? I, I sent my husband to go get food from afar. Taco Bell it was. <laughs> and you know, I didn't feel guilty. Because I said, tonight I'm doing the taquito diet. <laughs> Not the keto, the taquito diet. I said, give me four taquitos with sour cream. Right? I don't want to wait. Who wants to wait now? Nobody. Nobody. Social media has changed our lives. Truly. You know, the... Uh, Everything that you, you know, we talk about addictions, you know, and we talk about, like, we mentioned the big addictions, right? Like, you know, like alcohol, drugs, and pornography, and 
uh, sex addiction, and those are big ones, you know. But do you know that most of us, they said that we are 90%, 95% of the people now in our society, not just in the Western, but everywhere in the world where they are able to get Wi-Fi, do you know that they are 95%, if, I, if I'm not mistaken, according to Google, you can do it yourself. They're addicted to social media. We don't know how to, we don't know how to connect. As long as I get 100 likes if I post, I'm good. I have 1,600 friends on Facebook. God, don't tell me I don't have friendships. <laughs> I encourage people daily through Facebook. You're using me. That's the platform. How many friends do you followers do you have on Instagram? Praise God, he has given me 500. 500 followers of Jesus Christ that I'm mentoring, that I'm jabbing here and there, right? Depending how I feel. You send messages, hidden messages. You should forget your, you know, enemies, love your enemies. Maybe because you're hating somebody, right? No, that's what's going on. We think we're being the church. Read it, please go. I can uh, Facebook me. Okay, become my friend so I feel better. <laughs> and that lead you to all of these things. That this is what's happening. Even in the church, we are just good with a high and by. But yet, we want to transform the world. Yet, I want to grow. I want to grow. We were, we were designed to be connected. We are a body. But everybody's living on their own. Everybody's praying to their own saint. That's a translation. I'm trying to translate it because it's in Spanish. But I think it means the same. You know? No, it's time to return to God. Say salvation is for today. So what do we need to do? I'm so glad you asked me that. What do I need to do? You need to, you need to cultivate. Because salvation means deliverance. Work out your own salvation. I'm waiting to, to um, because I'm always looking, right, what does salvation mean on this one? Because sometimes it means something else, but the, it's usually the same. But it's salvation is for today, but it says salvation means deliverance. And that scripture where it says work out your own salvation means work out your own freedom. Did you know that? Work out the ringtone. Get a better one. <laughs> work out your freedom. It says work out your well-being. That's what it says. It says work out your well-being, work out your deliverance, work it out. So we get to get back in the, in, in the same cycles, in, in destructive cycles. It's not because God is not able to deliver us. It's that you and I are not working out. I'm not working out. I'm not cultivating my freedom. I'm not cultivating my deliverance. I'm not cultivating my well-being. It says that. The salvation that we have given is such a great treasure, and we treat it lightly. We treat it lightly. Let's be honest, and, and even myself, let's be honest. Every day, do you read your word? Every day. And I'm not asking you, like, hey, read, like, ten chapters. Like, at least one chapter. And not just to read it and get a quote. Like, because God is not, God is not interested in your performance. God is not interested in how oh, you, you pray. You know what, Virginia, you did good today because you prayed for 30 minutes. Uh, I'm going to give you a start if you pray for 25 minutes, but if you do 30, you get two stars. If you do an hour, you get five stars. If you pray in the spirit and another 30 minutes, I'm going to give you 10 stars. If you read five chapters, I'm going to give you a green light. Do you know when the kids go to school and you're so happy? I, I said, we'll come home and Alexa will come uh, home from school. And I wanted to see their report because every day they will give them a car, right? They either got stars or they got green lights or red lights or yellow lights. And I think sometimes we live that way. We think that, okay, so if I perform today, if I just perform today for God, if I read enough, if I behave well enough, then I wonder if I, if I made it, if I'm good with God. No, you're always good with God if you have Jesus. Because that, that's a position that we have been given. He says, work out your own salvation with fear. He says, use serious caution. Are you using serious caution the way that we're working out your own salvation? You didn't know that we have eternal inheritance. 
Okay, let me give you one more scripture. Acts 3, 19 to 20. And he says, so repent. Change your inner self, your old way of thinking. Regret past sins and return to God. Seek his purpose for your life so that your sins may be wiped away. Blotted out, completely erased, so that times of refreshing may come from the presence of the Lord, restoring you like a cool wind on a hot day. Don't you want to feel that? And he says, and that he may send to you Jesus the Christ who has been appointed to you. So let me tell you something. It says that he wipes away our sins. He doesn't say that he wipes away your past. I think that's, we have a problem there. We think many times that he wipes away our past. No, he's not. Wouldn't it be awesome? I wish, like I am always wishing things that they're not possible. Because I was like, wouldn't it be awesome that God would come? It's like amnesia on that memory. Amnesia on that one. Amnesia on that one. No, he says, I'm going to keep, uh, you're going to be able to look back. You're, you're going able, to be able to see the things for what they were, but you're going to be able to see me in everything, in everything that you've been through, in every sin that you have committed. You know what? I'm going to wipe it away. If you have Jesus, he says, I'm going to wipe it away. And you know that in the brain, so he says that he's going to wipe away our what our sins he doesn't say he's gonna wake away your memories what happened to you your hurts so what happens is that we say you know what let it go and we sing that song right let it go remember Elsa I don't know how to sing <laughs> pretty famous it's a good song who can sing it for me let it go like whatever oh. yeah you see we all know it right <laughs> let it go everybody's like oh, yeah. We said, let it go. You know what? Let it go. Just let it go. Well, tell me. Go watch the movie and tell me how Elsa's life ended. When she was trying to let it go, right? She was trying to like, no, I'm not going to remember what, what my parents did. I'm not going to remember this. I'm, not gonna, I'm just going to deny it. I'm just going to pretend that it didn't happen. Well, that led her to a very bad place. Right? Oh, we don't let it go. You need to, you need to go back with Jesus processes the file because the file is still here do you know that we keep files in our head i used to think that i can burn them you can't burn them you have to process them so i was praying all this prayers like father burn these files burn the files he's like uh, no my love you need to process the file because i have given you the power i've given you the ability i am with you process that and then they become memories and then I'm able to see that God was always with me. And you know the word repent means change your inner self. We need to repent. God wants to be relevant in your life. Do you know that? God is a God of relevance. People are like, no, Christianity is not relevant. Oh, yeah, no, Christ is relevant. Christ is relevant. And he wants you to go to the root of it. He wants you to work out your salvation. The gift of salvation is without merit. We can't earn it. No matter how good you are, there's no one good to earn salvation. A gift of salvation is without merit. You cannot earn salvation through the works that you do. This is a grace from God. There is not a merit system. And that's good news. That's good news. Because if it was about merit and how well I do, oh my gosh. I don't know where I've been. Where I would be. Do you know that there's people who do not believe in God who are more moral than we are? Do you know that? Do you know that there's atheists that are living more right, more clean? That they have stronger principles than we, that we proclaim to have a Jesus who transforms? How are we going to win them? I'm going to tell you there's people in the world that are Crazy people, read, read the news. People that are willing to, to strap bombs in, in, in their bodies because they believe. They believe something that is not real. And yet we have the real God, right? We have the real Jesus that can transform us and renew our minds. We have all of that. But we're not willing to die. 
Hey, he's not asking us to die and to die physically. No, he's just asking, hey, there's some things that need to be put to death. He, everything that he gave us, he gave us in a form of a seed. In a form of a seed. He gives us a seed. With her. He gave us a measure of faith. He gave us a master seed faith. The problem is like you're like, I don't know, my faith is not working. Well, what happens is you're still keeping your master seed. You're still probably in your pocket. You haven't planted the seed. There's life when it dies. And maybe right now you feel like you're dying. And it's not really that you're dying. You're just being planted. You know that it hurts to be planted? Because it gets to be very obscure and dark. And it's uncomfortable. Because when you're planted, you're going to see another roots of other trees coming in. And you're like, what? Uh -uh, I don't want those roots here. I want to be planted by myself. No, you're going to be planted in the body of Christ. Well, I want to, I wanna, before I close, I want to I wanna show you. Because I've been praying a lot. The Bible says that faith without works is what? It's said. So I've been praying so much. And so maybe you can agree with me. Because I've been asking God. I told you how much I love cake, right? So I've been praying that heaven will send me cakes. I, um, I just want cake, Lord. And. And every day I, I, I wake up and I look, Lord, will this, this, will it be today that you just, I'm just going to go in my backyard and I'm going to believe that cakes, bun cakes are just going to fall <laughs> in the mighty name of Jesus. I'm just going to read five scriptures so the bun cakes come. I'm going to pray in the spirit so ten bun cakes might come. Do you know that that sounds silly, but do you know that that's how we live? We're praying God about something that you're not willing to do. We're not willing to work out. So I, th so I said, okay, so God just gives us seed, right? But right now we're not into, into, into planting, and you probably don't even know how to plant. You have your own gardener, right? I do. But if I want a cake... Hey, I don't know how to, I don't know how to cook. I don't know how to bake. So, but I want to look the part. Do I look the part? Okay, so I even had to like print everything out because I don't know how to, how to bake a cake. So I'm looking at everything. Okay, so this is what God gives you. God has given you everything that you need. What do you need? I'm just using a cake, right? But let's say you, you're asking, oh God, God, I just need a new job. Then go get a job. Father, I just want a new career, but you don't want to learn anything new. Or I just want my spouse to get in alignment, but you don't want to change. I want my kids to listen, to, to, to obey, but we don't want, we don't want to address our own, our own things that maybe we have done to our kids. Right? And so God gives us all these things, and I have, you, you may have this at home, right? This is what I've been praying to God. Like, Lord, just give it said to me with such a cute look. Isn't that cute? I even pray for a little cake, whatever, holder, because he looks so delightful. But he, he tells you to do that, and I have to even see, says, great, get all your ingredients together, so I'm going to try it, okay? Because next, next, uh, next Wednesday is part two, so I'm going to bring the cake, okay, to see how it looks. It's not going to be this cake, but it's going to be the new cake. But I'm going to tell you that cake is not going to look good, because it's my first time baking. So when we start working out our salvation, you know, don't, don't be like, oh, my God, what's going on? Well, you're learning to, to live a new life, right? So you're not going to start with, like, oh, my God, what an experience you are. Like, oh, my God, you have become so good at forgiving. No, it's going to take you forever, right? I should have opened all this before, right? But you get it. You want to help me? Since you know how to cook. I don't even know what this is okay so okay so I'm gonna start right so I'm gonna follow my instructions because it's be follow your instructions and do them right so it says gather all your ingredients so these are all my ingredients this is already stressing me number one gather your ingredients oh you already ugh. okay 
I don't have the oven, but it says preheat oven 325. And I need to grease the pan, right? So I'm going to pretend the oven is there. How do you grease it? I don't know. It should give me better instructions, right? I'm going to do this. You see, this is greasing off, right? Okay, what do you do with it? Oh. Okay, and then now what? What do I do? Oh, yeah. This is, I need to put the butter and the sugar. So, so he says to, to put a cup. You see, I look like, boy, what are you doing? That's how we look when we're working out our own salvation for the first time. The butter and the flour. Is this flour? Yeah. It is? What? I guess I'm not helping you. It's confusing me. The flour. It says flour, right? Oh, my gosh. You guys are not helping. You see, that's how it looks when we're working our own salvation. You're like, you're doing that wrong. You're doing that wrong. You're not even doing this, so shut up. No, I'm just kidding. I'm working my salvation here right now. And then you're like, they don't even tell you how to crack the eggs. Oh, my God. Five eggs. Oh, but see, oh my gosh. That's how much I know, right? Dang it. Now you know I'm not teasing. Like, one, who said it? Who said it? Thank you, sir. Thank you. You see, that's why we need the church. So somebody said, no, Virginia, don't go that way. You're going to destruction, destruction. Dang it. I already look bad. This is a good lesson that you will never forget. This is how it looks when you're working out your own salvation because it's messy. Three eggs. How many do I have? Four? It says five. You're not even helping me. Okay, one more. I already ruined it, so it's not going to be a good cake. But it's okay. It's okay. Now what do you do? You whisk it. We use this one. You see my face? Mm. Okay, now I need sugar. I think I do. Now I'm getting tired. I don't even want to measure. Is this how you whisk it? It's not looking good. Okay, now what do I need? Uh, a pinch, he says, so I don't know. Sugar, I need sugar. Okay. And next Wednesday, we're all eating my cake. You better eat the cake. Okay. This is so stressful. Oh, my God. If you bake, send me a cake. Okay, but look, I'm going to tell you, this is not going to be good. I, I, I even ruined the, the pan, but let me tell you. When you work out your own salvation, you're not going to be an expert. We want to be an expert on the first day, on the first year. No, this is a lifestyle. I'm going to become a, an amazing baker probably when I get to heaven. You, you work out your own salvation when you arrive in heaven. And since I already ruined this, you have to go back here. And then you even make faces. You see that? I'm like... Our singers and our worshipers I always watch them because they have funny faces when they're playing. Because they're into it. They always have their own like, right? And this is me cooking like. And then, look, what a mess. It's messy. Oh, what did it say? It's during the cake flower with the water. Okay, big. Okay, now I'm going to put it here. Thank God. Oh, my gosh. I can't believe that. Nobody was helping me. Praise the Lord. This tastes nasty. Oh, I forgot. He has to have this. <laughs> and it's closed. So don't eat my cake because, you know, you never know what I'm going to use. You're like, yeah, that's what you said. Oh, my God. <laughs> okay. Whisk it one more time. 
I encourage you, do not eat my food. Do not eat my food. <laughs> oh, this is so disgusting. That makes me like baby bumps. Can you get the point? <laughs> Working your own salvation is messy. It's messy. It takes work. I'd rather go buy me a bun cake. I'm already stressed. I'm sweating. <laughs> this is what we want. But God, he says, no, I have given you everything and have given you instructions. But now I want you to put them all together and see what you can make of your life. And as you work it out daily, <laughs> eventually, eventually my dream is that I will bake at least something similar to this. I'm eating this, so no one's touching it. And if you want to come taste my creation, you're more than welcome. Okay. Okay, I feel disgusted. Okay, you get to bake it. You get to choose. How are you going to live your life from today and on? Are you going to work out your own salvation? Or are you just going to look the part? Because I can look the part and I can say and I can come and say, look what, I, look what I baked at home. And sometimes you're coveting, you're seeing someone else's bun cake. Because they have been working out for a while, daily, their own issues. They have been dealing with their own past and, and doing files, processing files with the Holy Spirit. And so now they look like that. But next Wednesday, next Wednesday, I encourage you, come so you just can see my cake. I'm going to try to bake it. And I bet you it's going to be flat. But it's okay because it's my first one, right? So I just want to pray for you, if you allow me. So close your eyes and bow your heads. And I just want to tell you that God loves you. He loves you so much. And his desire is as for you to choose today. Choose, am I going to work out my own salvation? Or am I going to allow, or am I going to allow the cares of this life, the pain of my past, or the problems that you are encountering right now, am I going to allow that to define me or am I going to allow what God already has given me? He has given me everything. He has given me an inheritance. And that's not, not only when, that's not only when you get to heaven. It's the inheritance that we have now. But you need to get messy. You need to get involved. God wants you to participate in his life and in his plan. He has a plan for you, but you, be, you, you play a big part in it. So if this message has touched you and God maybe God is telling you you know you need to repent you know what that repentance means is come on it's time to address the way you think the way you're doing things you need to come back to me he's saying come back to me I, I am waiting with open arms I'm not here to to judge you no he says that he sent his only son not only to save the world he says I have I've sent my son to save the world not condemn it there's gonna be a time when he's coming back and then we're gonna give an account but right now Right now, he's not in that, in that plan. Right now, he's in the plan of restoration, salvation, and he's here to give you life. So I'm asking you today, do you want to trade down your pain? Do you want to trade down your ashes? Do you want to trade down whatever you've been through? And you can say, you know what, today I can start working out my own salvation. Today it could be a new day for me. Maybe you've never been, you have never given your life to Jesus because I'm not talking about religion. I, you know, I didn't, I'm, I'm not talking about morality. I'm not talking about, no, you know, people think that being moral is what makes us a Christian. No, that's just an evidence that we have Christ in our lives. So God wants to give you new life. So today, if you're saying, you know, Jesus, I want to, I want to invite you into my heart. I want your purpose and your plan. I want to trade it for, for the goodness that you have in my life. So if that's you at the count of three, I want you to raise your hand. One, two, three. Is there anyone saying, yeah, you know what, that's me. I'm going to trade down my life for you. I see the hand. Thank you so much. Thank you. Is there anyone else here? You know, don't be shy. Maybe your heart is going really fast and you're saying, like, what are people going to think? 
doesn't matter what people think. It matters your choice. It matters what are you going to do with your life today. Nobody's promised tomorrow. Okay, say this prayer with me. Say, Jesus, come into my heart. Be my Lord. Be my Savior. Thank you for making a way for me. Thank you for forgiving me of all my sins. Thank you that today I'm new. I belong to you. And I get to work out my own salvation. So thank you. I receive you in my life. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Awesome. If today's message impacted you in any way and you want to help us spread the gospel with a financial gift, text the number below and we know that someone's life will be changed the same way that yours was today.